Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about Reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what to do when your PhD student wants to quit or wants to leave. So if you don't know me, I'm Associate Professor of Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship and I created this whole Reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There are so many people that helped me out along the way that I want to pay the favor for it and help you out along the way. All right, so what do you do when your PhD student or graduate student wants to quit with their academic journey or their PhD journey or whatever that they're doing? And um, what do you, I mean, we all kind of reach these moments where we have students that want to go in a particular direction and uh, it's not gonna be academia. So what do you actually do? There's three things I want you to think about. So. Um, the first thing is, is I want you to have them think about this decision and go into depth with this particular decision, but not do it in like a really nasty way. I want you to think, have them think about it in a rational way as much as you possibly can. There is a lot of emotion that's associated with this. They're going to feel very guilty. They're going to feel like they're letting you down. They're going to feel all sorts of um, negative emotions and you want to um, be okay with that and tell them, reassure them that it's okay to have all of these negative emotions and then have them rationally make this decision. So this should be a course that is gonna happen over, maybe it's a month, maybe it's two months where you have several, maybe three conversations about making this transition. And the first one is, is have them sort of think about the trajectories or career choices of where they're gonna be in 10 to 20 years given this particular choice that they're taking, right? So you want to get them to list the different alternatives where they see their, themselves. Maybe it's going to be consulting, for example. Maybe it is going to be in, um, you know, working as a, as a manager in heavy industry. Maybe it is going to be, um, you know, maybe it's going to be a professor. And then have them list the different alternatives on an ex in an Excel spreadsheet or on a piece of paper. You can even sit down and do that with them and then have them think about the different criteria of what their choice or what they, where they see themselves or what they want to do, right? So it might be how much money they, they're going to make. Um, maybe it is going to be the autonomy that they're going to have. Maybe it is going to be, you know, travel that, that is associated with it. And that could be positive or negative for, for most people. Um, and so you want to have them think about the pros and cons or um, place values on those particular things and then have them rank order those particular alternatives. And what you'll see is that there'll be an alternative that will pop out that is right for them in terms of how they're feeling. And um, when that happens, and if it's the right decision for them and they still wanna exit with that particular choice, um, instead of having an emotional reaction and dealing with this in an emotional way, because we all have ups and downs, as we all know, um, it's not necessarily a, a fun career all the time, but you know we have to embrace those those downs or um, to make sure that that we are not just reacting to those emotions and we're actually making sure that we're making the right decision, right? So that is the key thing. And then once they have that right decision or the right alternative, uh, whatever it is for them, given that information, you want to help them so that they make a nice transition going forward. So the second thing I want, wanted to point out is you should be really happy for them and be very supportive in any particular endeavor or any particular alternative that they're going to do. So first of all, you cannot control their destiny. Um, there is the, when somebody has their mind made up, it doesn't matter what they are, are doing, they're going to do that particular thing. So you have very little choice and very little control over what's actually going to happen with particular um, individuals and uh, the students that you're advising. But what you do have control over is creating a culture with your students, creating a culture with your department that it's okay to have these doubts, it's okay to go into, um, you know, to go in a particular direction and uh, you wanna communicate with them and be as supportive as you possibly can. And the reason why you want to do that, it's not for those particular students, right? Or that student that you're working with. You wanna help them out as much as you can and make that nice tr transition. But what you're thinking about is the culture of what you're trying to create within the department um, or within the community of PhD students around you or graduate students around you. 
and just have them know that they are doing the right career path and have them um, just have the culture such that you can be more welcoming when other people want to come in and really truly want to be there right so you want to quickly make the transition for them of people that don't want to be there such that you can have other resources or pe more people coming in and making that transition and people that really really want to be there and that they're going to be committed with the thing that you're doing and then the other thing that happens is that PhD students and graduate students just like us, they all talk, right? And they see that, oh, this person is really supportive. Or, um, you know, that this department is very supportive. And that's, that's very attractive to a lot of people. And um, when you're more attractive, when they see that there's more opportunities or you're creating opportunities for them, you're going to attract more graduate students in the long run. It's going to take a long time. Right? It's not an easy process and it's not a quick thing. It's not going to happen over a year or two, but it's going to happen over five to ten years where they, people start to see that it's an attractive thing that you're doing and really truly caring about the individual and truly helping them out. And that's actually how you build a community within a business. It's really how you should be sort of thinking about management styles. It's, it's a difficult management style. Uh, because it requires a fair bit of work and investment on your part, but it also creates a nice culture that, uh, you know, it creates a lot of trust within the community, uh, and it also creates a culture of just openness and acceptance with people. And if you can create that, that culture within your department, that culture within the PhD students, people are going to be really happy uh, with what they're doing. So not only are you going to attract PhD students, um, and graduate students, but eventually in the long run, it's gonna be attractive to people outside of your department, outside of your university, outside of you know many different areas, and they're gonna see that. People are gonna see that what you're doing is good things for PhD students, um, and that's very attractive, right? It's attractive for other people, and they're gonna see that, oh, maybe we should hire that particular individual. So then you have more bargaining power when you go up with your dean and have a conversation with them. There's all sorts of fallbacks from this that take a long time because it's a reputation thing that you're building, that it's slow, it's difficult, and it, it's just a really slow process. But just know that it does build over time. So you can't stop those individuals from leaving. You're going to, um, what you want to do is minimize the amount of investment that you have in people that are not wanting to be there and help them make that transition so that you can attract other people that are going to um, be there and, and really want to be there. So that's what you should be thinking about is if somebody doesn't want to be there, get, get them out as quick as possible, help them out as quick as possible, and then be as supportive as you can. So this is the third thing I wanted to, to point out. So um, when, one, make them think about the decision as rationally as possible. The second thing is, um, you know, you can't stop them. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. And then the third thing is you want to make sure that uh, you're being as supportive as you can throughout the transition. Right, and so this means having them think about maybe instead of getting a PhD degree, you get them to get a master's degree, right? And try to figure out the requirements to get them to have a master's degree. Um, maybe you uh, try to find a job for them in industry, right? Try to make some connections with other people around them uh, and so that they can make that transition as quickly as possible and seamless as possible. So why do you want to do that? All right, so it might seem a little crazy and a waste of your time and resources to do this, right? It's going to take you some time to do this. Um, but what you're trying to do is help them build relationships so that when they go and they go into industry, they might tell somebody about the wonderful experience that they had at this particular school and that might be attractive to other PhD students. The other thing that might happen is that when they get out and they've been out for a year or two in industry or wherever it is that they're doing and thinking about, they might realize like, I really don't like this. I really like the academic thing and come back and want to complete that particular project that they're working on and then they can come back and perform better because they know what they're wanting to do. Now that's a long-term thing and it's not going to happen for everybody but it does happen, right? They might show back, they might come back in five to 10 years and realize that what they're doing is, is a wonderful thing. And if you're supportive and you're not really, um, you know, harming them in any sort of way and, and being there for them, they're going to think about making this, this transition with you. 
at that moment, uh, there might be, they might have extra resources, they're going to be a lot more mature, they're going to be, um, you know, they're going to be well trained at that moment because they've already been, uh, you know, interacting with different industry folks. And so the transition is going to benefit you in many different ways. So always think about these as opportunities rather than, you know, as a moment of when you're losing resources or losing control or you're not going to, you know, be able to publish as much with this particular student. That does happen. That's true in the short run. But that's what, not what you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about these long run plays because it, take, it doesn't take very long for five to 10 years to happen. And at that moment, um, if you've been sort of a nasty person with any of these transitions, uh, other people are gonna see that. And that is gonna play out in those 10 years and it's going to restrict the opportunities that you're gonna get in the long run. So that's an important thing to think about is you're always trying to build opportunities. You're trying to open up and build relationships as much as you possibly can in many different areas such that in 10 years, you're set up such that you're doing uh, wonderful things and you can do wonderful things. So if you're thinking about the immediate short run um, positive or trade-offs that you have, that's going to affect the long run. And that is an important thing to think about. And you wanna always be thinking about the long run if you're building your career for its highest potential. All right, it's like investing, and that's what you should be thinking about is accumulated interest. And that's an important concept that you talk about in investing and it actually plays out in many of our lives around us as well. All right, so uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel, I do appreciate it. And uh, good luck with all these difficult discussions that you're gonna have. All right, take care, bye.